Now then, and welcome back to another episode of Forever Stranded. This week in Forever Stranded, I'm still doing a bit more stuff in the factory over here. I'm still working through bits and pieces, processing. I've been doing a few other little bits and pieces, as you can see. Um, I figured I would start with a few bits and pieces. I've been doing a little experimenting, right? Um, my my favourite subscribers always leave comments down below, and they mentioned that you can now just put a storage bus on Storage Draws controller. I did this so that it was set up with eight different channels, thinking eight channels of um, applied energistics. I put my uh, draw controller and connected it up so that I could put very quickly all of my current supplies by double right clicking, put my supplies away very quickly. I was using the door controller to put my inventories away quickly, right? And then uh, I had the storage buses connected to them all and I was kind of thinking that I was going to take this back section out and just leave eight storage buses added. But then the, uh, the wonderful people in the comments told me that I can put a storage bus on a draw controller. I'd never used these two in conjunction before and it works perfectly. Works perfectly exactly as expected. The storage draw controller has storage access to everything it's connected to and the applied energistic system can read every inventory it's connected to and put things in and take things out. So what I'm going to do today, um, not necessarily all on camera, I'm just going to do bits and pieces here and bits and pieces there, is set up a um, draw controller there with a storage bus connected to it so it will store away in compacting drawers all the various finished products. And I was thinking long and hard about how to then transfer this over to the other system and the future systems and like. But it's simply a case of putting a storage bus on the other side of the draw controller so they can access everything. So both separate AE systems can access the same set of um, drawers. Yeah, same set of drawers. So. What I've got to do next is start limiting the amount of stuff that's inside of this applied energistic system. Uh, limiting the amount of stuff that's in these disk drives. At the moment you can see there's lots and lots of crazy stuff in here. Lots and lots of crazy stuff. Now everything it can store, it can also, it should be able to access from here as well. Right. So we've got a few things that I want to start with today. Uh, at the moment, my power supply is good at forty uh, at eighty four million, and they're getting on with the job at hand. I do have one name tag, and I said in the last episode that I wanted to start naming these helpers, and you did put your names down. So those that put their names down in the last episode, thank you very much. The last episode is where I'm going to get the helpers' names from, but at the minute I've only got one name tag, um, <laughs> and I've got three controllers. So, uh, three, three, pl three places to put name tags. I've got one name tag at the minute, though. And that's not enough. Uh, when I searched to see if I could make name tags in this pack, because so in some packs you can make name tags out of a bit of sticky glue and paper and string and whatever. But in this pack, no. You can only find them in the dungeons uh, or mineshaft chests. And I haven't seen any dungeons or mineshaft uh, chests. Um, because I haven't been digging around for them under all this sand. It's a it's a pain. But villager trades, apparently there's a librarian that can do a level 5 20 emeralds for name tag um, thing. So I'm going to do that. Now I checked out the librarian that I've got. And the librarian I've got, I picked him up, brought him out of here and went and took him and did some stuff uh, in the factory. He's here. And I've unlocked a few of his trades. We've got paper for emeralds. Um, emeralds and a book for Fortune 2. We've got books for emeralds. We've got book, uh, emeralds for compasses. Emeralds for bookcases. Written books for emeralds. All, all the same normal stuff, look. All the same normal stuff. Destruction 3. I don't even know what Destruction 3 does as an enchantment. Leave your comments down below. Thank you very much. Kaboomerang 2. That's got to be something to do with the... Um, extra utilities to Boomerang and that's as far as I got. I didn't want to buy any more. I actually ran out of emeralds so I didn't buy any more to unlock any more to see if I could get... Hey! They're all staring at me. They're like, 
Why do you keep us in this prison? Why do you keep us in this prison under the armed guard? Um, I have no answers for that, guys. I have no answer for that. Maybe because it's for your own benefit to stop you walking into cactuses. There you go. It's for your own benefit to stop you walking into cactuses. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that worked. I think they believe me. I think they believe me. They showed up a little bit, didn't they? Uh huh. My uh, my system here, the too many coils. Uh, well, not too many coils. Too many blades. I think I just did too many blades when I was making it. Um, I can't keep up with it steam wise. This is going ape. Look at it. Pump, 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 pump. And it's using lots and lots and lots of yellurium and uh, uranium to do stuff. I would also want to have that automated today as well. I've done a little bit, some pieces of automation over here, like I've set it up for these first few bits and I've got some compacting drawers ready to add on to here, but I realise that I'm doing it this way because I don't particularly want to see what's coming. <gasps> oh, but if I'm doing that, then I can see from one side or the other. Yeah, actually, I can do it the other way. Oh my days. All right, well, let's, uh, let's start by disconnecting this from there. Okay. And I also want to start building up a stockpile. So we're going to take all the disk drives out of here. Start building a stockpile up in there. So it shouldn't have access to anything other than... Let's go with stored items. Stored items. It should only have access to the cobble generation system. Where it's got all of this stuff that it is slowly but surely sieving through here. But it, once it's broken that iron mesh that's in there at the minute, it should stop and give us all of the things that we need to process. And so the processing is what we're about today, right? So we start that off, set that about. And I think I want to just set these drawers up so the output products are correct. That's still going to stay exactly where it is, but I'm going to start moving all these around so that everything that looks like it needs to be compacted will be compacted. And everything... I don't know if lapis needs to be compacted and emeralds need to be compacted, really. I suppose they can because there's a block form and it'll be easier to store things, maximise things if I do it that way. Uh, and then there's a lot of bits and pieces that are also the random seeds and stuff that we've had before, all these random seeds and things, that I want to put on void uh, upgraded ba uh, drawers so we get rid of anything that we're not going to use a lot. But all of this ore and stuff that we need I want to start figuring out processing first of all though let's go and get sorted out all the things that I'm not going to process I'm just going to store in the output of the sieves okay well that's all set up nicely in there I did the compacting drawers for the ingots and I did storage drawers single individual storage drawers for all the other ink the important parts um I, I've got a spare one there <laughs> I can't think what I'm missing I thought I was missing something at least, but I don't seem to be missing anything. Maybe I'm going to end up putting Appetite in there or something else in the future. There is also the nether stuff to be done. So I haven't yet incorporated the stuff from the nether gravel, which is going to be produced in this section, and also the soul sand is going to be produced in that section. I haven't done that yet. This is still just producing from the dust, everything that comes from cobble. And all of these things should have homes. Uh, they may have homes that don't have enough storage capacity yet. That might be the problem with those at the minute. I haven't put the upgrades into the drawers. Uh, and then once I've done the maximum upgrades that I want, I can then uh, put a void on them. Like at the moment, I've got four big diamond upgrades on this, but no, um, no void upgrade. And I should probably make my final upgrade a void upgrade in all cases. Like this AE stuff. Final upgrade, avoid upgrade. So it can keep adding tons in, but it never officially gets to anywhere. Uh, it never overflows as such. And for some reason, this is showing up as minuses. I wonder why it's showing up as minuses. It's all showing up as positives in my Walia now. I don't know why that turned into minuses. I don't know. Maybe because I used some on the other side. Maybe that's the thing that's going to start being a problem. I added some toggle buses on here so I can turn this off and it will not get connect to that side and I can turn this off and it will not connect to this side. That was useful in placing the storage drawers in, defining what it is, locking it and then turning it back on so it can add to it. Uh, I've also been using this ME port so you take what's 
uh, what drives you've got here and you put it into here and it automatically puts everything off the drive into whatever storage you've got which is basically putting it into that storage over there I've also got the same over this side so I can put things from this system over there at the minute everything is accessible from this system but of course if I turn the toggle off bing toggle off that's now not going to show me anything from over that side apart from the stuff that's been overflowing like gunpowder bone meal and blaze powder that steel is another thing, maybe. Graphite. There's a few things in here. Yeah, but this broken copper and stuff like that, that's a important part of what I've got to do next, really. Broken copper. The things that we were getting from the nether brick uh, or the nether gravel, odd bits and pieces, also going to need a processing recipe. But for starters, let's just work on what we've actually got. Ooh, and let's uh, fall down here, whatever. Yeah. What we've actually got available and how I'm going to process this next stage. So, I have added on to the already six channels that is doing the basic um, making and sieving, uh, or sieving all the different three different types here, to have two hammers. And these hammers are currently working through iron gravel and iron sand, just to start working through something for me to lessen the amount I've got stuck in the inventory. And I've got... Mm, very little of that iron gravel and sand left I should think let's have a look at the iron situation in here now iron situation yeah you see now as fast as the iron is being done the iron is being processed into iron powder and the powder is being processed into the stuff that we melt down into iron ingots so it's all being done as quickly as possible just by having those two hammers which is great now there's a thing that we do quite a lot of uh, and that's figuring out where things are going and all that kind of stuff. I've been trying to um, make it so that it's less stressful on one machine. I don't want it too stressful on one single machine. Uh, and the same with the hammerers, except for the fact that the hammerers, I'm just going to put in enough capacity cards to be able to do nine types. Because there are nine types of ores that we get. So I wanted to just make it so that it was easy nine ores. Why have I picked those up from my AE system? I've just been scrolling through my AE system and getting those. Uh, I did something similar with this, which is the main storage here for all of the bits that we get from there. I've already started doing this for it. So we've got all diff nine different types of platinum ore, all types of the gravel that come from that ore, all the crushed iron that comes from that, all of the sand ore that comes from that, all of the powdered ore that comes from that, and all of the powdered dust that comes from that, to allow me to have all of the um, all of the ores stored nicely away in one processing uh, uh, cell, storage cell. I would like to keep that as it is, and that's the way it should continue to be. But I do need to think about what nine things I need to add in. So we've got uh, we've got an iron ore already. Then we go with the gold gravel, and then tin gravel. We're going to have copper gravel. We're going to have the aluminium gravel. We're going to basically put all the gravels into one section, and we're going to work on the fact that it knows how to do gravel and make gravel. There's a lead ore gravel in there. Okay. Uh, and then the last one would be iron gravel. So what we want it to do is make and cr we want it to automatically craft and provide this hammer with every type of gravel that we can produce. So all nine materials, all nine types in here. Um, if I was really OCD, I'd be putting these in the right order. And that might pick people's heads in, but still. All nine of those ores are in there, right? And I believe that around the back here, I've got my crafting terminal set up over here, right? And in one of these, I've got all of the dust patterns. And in this one, I'm planning on having all the sand patterns. And in this one, I'm going to have all the gravel patterns. So I need to do all of the different gravel patterns now. And then all of the sand patterns and do the sand in the other hammerer as well. So it should be as simple as working through this little lot um, let's make some space in my inventory work through this little lot and do stuff together so gold tin 
Where's the tin now when we need it? Uh, well, there's silver. There's gold. We've got the gold ready. Let's do the tin. I'll just do this quickly off camera. I'll also do all the crushed as well and turn them into um, to patterns. That's just going into here like this and just placing uh, one, two, one, two, three, four in a pattern and then making that pattern, right? Putting this stuff away and then putting that pattern in the back over here in the one it's supposed to go in. So that pattern goes in there and slowly but surely it will create and it will craft and it will place gold gravel in there as often as it can. Alright, so now i got that set up so that these are doing the nine different types here and the nine different types there to keep that busy importing in. I've had to change it around a little bit because, well I haven't changed it around a little bit, I've added some like import buses and I've had to use the little cable t anchors to stop them connecting here so that they go into, well, essentially the crafting area behind. The crafting area currently I've got a co-processor so I can do two crafting jobs at once which makes this crafting a little bit faster. I only really need 1k storage because it's only doing one block at a time really. It's not it's not going to be processing thousands and thousands of things. It's going to be processing thousands and thousands of things per tick but it's not going to be processing thousands and thousands of things per whatever. Yeah, It's going to take all of this stuff and it's going to store it into here and then process it as best it can. The one thing I'm missing at the minute, let's just turn this back on for a sec so that we can have all of these emptying back out again. They should start emptying back out. One thing that I'm kind of missing at the minute was the utility stuff because with the iron bars and the iron mesh, I needed somewhere to store those. It can take the iron and it can make the iron bars and iron mesh to do that. We also need to make the ellurium and the uranium that can be used in the big reactor to be able to uh, power the big reactor. So I've now got the uranium gravel, uranium uh, sand. What was that one? That was the uh, yellow sand and gravel as well. And then we should have the yellow dust. Uh, I didn't make any dust. Let's see. Uh, no. Okay. Well, let's quickly make some. Uh, oh, we've turned everything into at the minute. This is automatically crafting all three different types of uranium and ellurium. Rather than hammering these out, because I don't want to set up another hammer just for a couple of things, I would rather keep it a little bit more uh, easy to manage, and I don't use that much of the power. It is important. It is very important, but it just seems like a, a waste of adding an extra hammer when all I really want to do are the nine different types of um, ingots. The other ones, I could just make up whatever uranium and yellurium I get out of these will just automatically get made into uh, blocks and then cooked in this end furnace over here. This one here is just going to cook everything like this in here as often as it can to make that and then stick that over here into this drawer. There's a thing with storage drawers that I've never really used, but now I find there is a use for. This storage downgrade using flint um, reduces the base storage to a single stack instead of eight stacks. And I feel like that is something that I want to take hold of and use because, well, um, I don't want to put all of my um, lava and all of my um, sand, soul sand, in through these devices as fast as possible. So I kind of want to limit the amount of stuff. Like, at the minute, I've got 19 stacks of soul sand in there um, because I've put a export bus onto here to export sand. So it's taken the sand from over there, bring it over here, just all linked into this connection over here. Uh, and so that's just carrying on making soul sand. What I wanted to do though is stop when it gets to a certain amount. So what I'm going to take now is take everything out. Uh, that's probably not the best way of doing things. Uh, and then put this uh, one of these on there. Right. So now it should be limited to being. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, bah, dang it! Why is why is everything going wrong? Because I do everything in the wrong order. Okay, let's put that down there, there, and then stick all that away. 
I'm going to use all this. I'm going to sift it all. I'm going to sift it all and sieve it all and do all this sort of stuff with it. Um, but I want to get it out of my inventory for now. So if I put this down to just one stack, limit it to one stack of, right? And we could t take a stack now and put it into here, right? Then it will stop doing this function. It will stop pulling them out. It will keep putting in, but it'll end up just putting sand in and the sand will just sit as soul sand like this. So it'll turn to witch water and then sit as soul sand. So as soon as I use a soul sand, it will take one out of there and replace it with one of the ones in the barrels. And then the sand will go through and do the thing again t until there's one stack of soul sand in there, in the system. Right? Uh, over here, I want to do the same thing, but with netherrack. At the moment, I've got far too much netherrack. And so I will do the same sort of thing again. But uh, this time slightly more carefully. Let's take that, put all that in there. And then put that downgrade. So now when there's a one stack of netherrack it will stop using up all my lava supplies in there, right? And stop making netherrack. And so I can now add in my one basic again. Oh, I was going to do it over here. Uh, let's... <laughs> I just had redstone there, <laughs> and I just changed my drawers around, and I put a drawer in it, and then I used the drawer to take this, didn't I? Um, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to output... Or so we've got the export bus on here. We're going to export all the things that we need to do in here... Uh, we're going to have a few other bits and pieces as well, but we're going to connect it up over here. So we export uh, soul sand. Right? So I want to export soul sand, so I will set this up to tell it to export soul sand. So now it will fill that up. There's no mesh, of course, at the minute, but it will fill that up, which means that this whole system will kick back into gear to keep that up to 64 as that runs down into here. So, so far, so far. There will be a stack in here, and there will be a stack in there. That's two stacks worth of stuff, right? Uh, and then we've got to figure out what we want to have as an output from here. So, I'm thinking along the lines that I keep something next to here, because there's only so many things you can do with this. Uh, there's only so many things you can get, and I want to try and keep it so that it doesn't just keep taking and taking and taking and taking and taking until I've got more than I actually want. Uh, I want some of this stuff, and I want some nether quartz, and some bits and pieces like that. So I kind of want an infinite amount of nether quartz, but the other stuff might be able to limit it to tell it to stop producing. Um, and in the case of soul sand, the uses of soul sand for the sieve, that only makes nether wart, quartz, and gas tears. Now the quartz is what I actually want. So maybe the quartz, when I've got a stack of quartz, maybe, and do another limiting factor. So when I've got a stack of quartz, the whole system shuts down. Whereas the nether wart and gas tears just keep being produced and will void off until the nether quartz reaches the maximum amount. So that's what I'm going to try out on here. I also need to quickly upgrade this so it's got capacity to put uh, iron mesh in as well. Well, we've got a lot going on down here now. I'm using some wireless power to power the devices down here. Some wireless power to power the devices. I got some bits and pieces going on. I've got automatic nether rack going into here. Uh, the nether gravel automatically going in here and making all this stuff. This is the titanium dust that we're trying to make after all of it. I got a little bit of storage thing in here. A few channels here and there doing this stuff. And then over this side, I've got somebody or well, i've got uh was it link from zelda uh link doing nether quartz nether water and gas tears for me just to keep all that going uh it looks like this might already be full up why are you not oh, i haven't exported yet i was going to add an export bus on the side there as well uh which i don't yet have but it's all right that'll do for now Today's episode is over though, I'm afraid. That is all I've got time for. I will see you in the next very soon. I'll keep pottering around, getting some more stuff done. I've got to come up with a brand new idea. I've got to come up with a new idea as how to limit this stuff. And I know there are applied energetics level, level emitters, level limiters. So we might try and do some level emitter stuff in the next episode. So thank you all very, very much for watching. I will see you very soon for some more Forever Stranded. A goodbye.